Hi, we're going to run through running, uh, setting up a scene using 3D Studio Max 2017 for the ART renderer. Uh, just quickly show you how you reset 3D Studio. If you right click the icon, properties, and you'll see here that I've added minus a space and then minus DFD at the end of the uh, command line there. and that basically forces it to run in design mode so it's default design mode so space minus DFD and then you apply and OK okay so let's get the software started and this is going to run alongside the uh, the written sheet that is also uh, uploaded and you can uh, follow this step by step so this only takes us to the start to the to the end of creating a, a reasonable just white only render so kill off this startup menu okay so firstly set your units just make sure things are the right units so customize unit setup display unit scale meters system unit one unit equals one meter. Okay, okay. Just make sure the ART renderer is is going to be used. So you go to the render setup, renderer, ART renderer. So that's ready to use. Okay, so the next step is to import the model. So green number three, import, import. Got the models on my desktop. Bring in the finished pavilion and open. Okay, it's looked at the file and it knows that it's millimeters in there. I want to work in meters, so I'm rescaling from millimeters. Okay, put a tick in weld vertices, a threshold of zero. For this building, I'm turning off auto smooth because there's no circular surfaces or anything like that and I'm wanting it to try and orient the normals to make sure things are facing out of the way ok, click ok ok, the model appears, it's very difficult to read at the moment uh, we can see some light lines here, this is just 2D information that we want to get rid of ok, so we change the filter to shapes Okay, select over the top of the building. It's found some 2D stuff. Just press your delete key and that gets rid of that. Okay, the model is a bit difficult to see. Uh, well, actually, before we do that, reset this filter to all. The model is a bit difficult to see with all this, with just black. So you may need to change this. Just click on default shading and to add edged faces that might be okay what you might find is easier though is to use clay okay flat color or clay might work better okay so i'm going to go with clay just now until i get some materials that i need to see okay we need to add a base to this the building's just floating in the middle of nowhere okay so we reset the the views Okay, we've got zoom in one window here or zoom in all windows. So we'll fill those so we can see the whole thing. I'm using the top view, just ro rolling outwards, and we're going to create a cylinder, something for it to sit on. Okay, just click and drag. We want the cylinder, you can see the radius increasing there in the bottom right hand corner. Set it to about 100, should be big enough let go of your mouse button move your mouse down now and it sets the thickness for the cylinder okay let's just modify that we don't need all these edges on it so while we've still got control of the cylinder we modify it a height of minus one will be enough height segments just one but we'll increase the number of sides to 36 so it looks a bit more like a circle Okay, 
So this this viewport is now looking a bit more interesting. We've got a model on a on a base, and let me just check the uh, the script for a second. I, just want to, I want to try and go along with the script. So we've done the filter cylinder first material next. Okay, so I'm up to this point now. Set up the basic white material. Okay, so we're looking for our, mater our materials editor, and that comes in two versions. Okay, the simple one or the more complicated slate editor. Use the simple one. Okay, this is called Compact. It takes a few seconds to appear. Uh, it's basically trying to render now. My, the fans on my laptop have just kicked in because it's trying to render these using whatever settings are in the scene. Okay, so we're going to take the first material and we're going to try and kill off the shininess. So, using one of these presets, change it to matte paint. Okay, it should go blue. Okay, and we want to adjust the coating. So we've got this clear coat here. Let's. That's okay. That's set to zero and zero. There's no coating there. That's good. Uh, the basic parameters, we want the full strength of whatever color we put on, so it wants to be one. We want white, okay, and the roughness of one, so it's not shiny. Okay, a little bit of sheen disappeared there. Okay, we shouldn't need to change anything else. That's just a basic material, so very few settings to change with. with if you want simple materials for these physical type. Okay, it's not used in the scene at the moment. So we grab everything in the model and then assign the material to the selection. Okay, the little tags appear in the corners indicating that the material is now used. Okay, you can close the materials editor now. Oh, sorry, one last thing. Rename this. Naming the materials makes things much easier so let's call this white okay you can close the materials editor now okay this still is showing in the clay okay because we we, we this kind of forces it over the top but the, the material is on the object so it will show up in the render okay uh, next step we want to do is let's just check the script uh, we've want to add a light to the scene okay so add a light from the photometric set of lights okay the standard and photometric so from photometric use the sun positioner okay come over your model and click and drag and it will create a compass point okay let go and you're deciding which way north is so let's put north up the way just now and then a third click decides how far the symbol for the sun stands sits away from the model okay now that's a very general position we need to make this a bit more accurate for Barcelona so we modify the sun positioner okay the north direction is 104 degrees round the way We need a location, so we're looking location on Earth, Europe, Barcelona. Okay. Okay. Then time of day. Let's have three in the afternoon, so we get the light coming across the model, and time of day. Let's sorry, uh, day of the year. Today is the seventh day, so I'll just pick seven for that. But let's go back in, uh, maybe down to uh, February, so we get some reasonably long shadows. Okay, so three in the afternoon in February, we've got the light coming across the building. Okay, next step is to add a camera. Okay, so we're adding a camera now. We're adding to the scene again, it's a camera. We're going to use the target camera because it's it has a bit less complex settings. Okay, 
so zoom in and I'm going to stand here so you click once, hold, drag towards the building let go ok now I want to change this view to see what the camera is seeing so we click in this viewport click again on the word perspective cameras camera 001 ok while you're still in this viewport click and hold and you can pull downwards which is moving the camera upward so let's set it so that we're kind of roughly halfway up the building ok we're very close to it feels like we're very close to the building but really it's just a narrow field of view uh, so we want to modify the camera and only the camera ok so you might be safer here to put the camera's filter on so that you don't accidentally change anything else ok so if I've, if I've des deselected the camera ok I'm going to switch this off because it, it keeps adding more cameras so I'm going to select object that's stopped adding the cameras now ok and I'm off the camera ok if I want to edit this camera click on it modify change the lens length this will give me more see, see more of the building from the same point now, I don't really want to see into the distance here so my target needs moved around so I'll let the move tool look for the camera's target it's a small blue square and using the gizmo I can drag the camera around ok, a bit further so it fills the view better ok, now we should be in a position to do a render now so let's do a quick test render and see what it looks like so we're rendering the current viewport ok absolute whiteout and that means the exposure control isn't set properly so we go to rendering exposure control ok we're not using a physical camera so we don't use this exposure control we want to use the global exposure control 6 is more suited to an interiors view ok for outside start at 15 ok press enter now try render that's looking more more feasible now ok it's very grainy it didn't render for very long so it hasn't been able to do create much quality there ok so we've got to now try and improve things the shape of the render is also pretty uncomfortable I'm seeing far too much sky and far too much foreground ok so looking at the script we've added the camera ok we've adjusted the exposure control we're now near the end of this script we're going to change the render setup ok so we can close the exposure control and go back to the render setup ok There's three tabs here, you'll only really need to use two of them ok so on the common tab what we can do is increase the the number of pixels and also create a proportion that's more suited to the building ok 64480 is a 4 to 3 ratio this building would probably suit something more like a 5 to 1 ratio so 5 1 something like that so let's try 1000 by 200 ok now I can't see that manifesting itself here I don't know what's happening so if you click on the word camera or one and show safe frames right so there's my 5 to 1 ratio ok that's, that's too strong isn't it I, I've not, I can't see enough of the building I might just miss a little bit of the roof there as well so possibly 1000 to 300 that really suits the architecture now that's going to work much better ok put force two sided on because the model came from outside of 
the 3D Studio. And then we want to save the file so we can use it later. So click on Files. I'm going to save it to my desktop and call it Test Cam 1. Test on Camera 1. I'm going to save it as a TIFF file. And that way it will embed any transparency information into the file as well. Okay, if you click save, it should ask you what do you want what else do you want to do with the TIFF file? I want to store the alpha channel. Okay. So when we hit render, it's now going to create a file that we could use elsewhere. Okay, now the quality of the, the rendering is determined by this tab. Okay, and you can see here it's set to draft, so it would achieve that very quickly. It's, you know, it just allows you to check for, for lighting and materials in a very crude way. So you could either specify a specific time, or a quality level, or a combination of both. So if I put time on here, it's likely to get to draft before it gets to five minutes. Okay, but if I said extra high, it's more likely to stop rendering in five minutes than before than before it gets to extra high. So let's sit somewhere right in the middle, okay, but only allow it five minutes to render. Okay, and I'm not going to do this at real time because it will take too long, okay? I don't want to run the video for five minutes unnecessarily. So we'll start it rendering, I'll pause the video and I'll unpause it once it gets to the end of the render. Okay, so we, we'll let it start rendering and you see it progressively improving the image. Okay, I'm now going to pause the video and come back in four and a half minutes time. Okay, now it's got to it's got to its target level well within the five minutes. Okay, see here the rendering time is only one minute to get to that target level. So this is you know, a good fast renderer. It works very well. Okay, so the, the next video that I record will will start looking more at the materials and uh, then what we do with it afterwards. So that takes us to the end of the script. Okay. We've done our stage 2 render and it did look much better.